we're gonna actually talk about gout. And the thing is, gout is caused by some specific things, and we're gonna talk about that. But a lot of the herbs that, and, and herbal remedies that we can use uh, to help support a healthy system in terms of alleviating and reducing issues pertaining to gout can also be just good for all of us. So let's go ahead and get started here. So I'm working with a client right now, and that client has chronic gout. And it's just something that some people end up getting. Gout is basically a musculoskeletal condition, and it's brought on by too much uric acid in the body to the extent that the kidneys can't process it very well. And these crystals, these uric acid crystals, end up in the joints, usually in the big toe. That seems to be the most common area where gout tends to form and what it looks like is generally it's really a hot red swollen joint. So what that looks like generally for most people is you've got an area in the big toe, one of the joints, usually the one right next to the foot, and it's really painful. It's very intense pain. You've got a limited range of motion. A lot of times people can't even get their shoes on. There's joint sensitivity. In other words, when you touch the joint area, it's very tender to the touch. It really hurts. Like even if you're laying in bed and you have like covers on your foot, it's painful. And it can be warm. It can actually feel warm, and that's because of the inflammation in the area. The uric acid crystals actually get into the joint and they cut into the tendons, the muscles, other tissues in there, and that's what causes the extreme pain. Obviously, it's not fun. In very advanced cases of gout, you might actually have something called tophi or tophus. These are hard extended lumps with that you can actually see white under them a lot of times and that's the uric acid crystal. So it's gout is not definitely not a fun thing <laughs> to deal with. So what we want to be trying to do here is supporting the body so that it can work appropriately, so that it can get back into a state of balance and get rid of the purines, which are the substances that cause the uric acid buildup in the body if they're not handled appropriately. If most people, if they get gout, they head to the doctor and there's the conventional medicine approach. The conventional medicine approach is usually drugs, right? <laughs> and what doctors will try to do is mitigate the pain relief or the pain. And they do that by giving people NSAIDs like ibuprofen or naproxen. And then also there's a drug that's called colchicine and it actually comes from a plant, which is the autumn crocus. And it is a little bit anti-inflammatory as well. Sometimes people will end up being on steroids and that's not a good thing either. We don't generally want to be messing with those too much. And then there are certain uric acid redu reducing drugs that help reduce the uric acid in the body. All right, next up are dietary and lifestyle changes. We always hear this, right? <laughs> Somebody ends up with a chronic problem. And what do we say? Take care of your diet and your lifestyle. But seriously, this is uh, definitely something to consider in, in the cases of gout. Foods that are high in purines are many. There's a lot of them. But the most important ones to try to reduce or stay away from would be your organ meats like liver, your red meats, Certain kinds of seafood like herring and mackerel and anchovies, they're high in purines. Um, alcohol consumption, especially beer, is uh, not really great for people who have gout. Uh, cauliflower is another one that's high in purine. You want to try to avoid those. And everybody loves to go to a restaurant and have good food with sauces and gravies and all of that good stuff. The sauces and the gravies in today's modern diet generally contribute to gout as well. They're just not very good for you. Then there's sugar. Sugar's terrible. All right, sugar's terrible for a lot of things, but especially for gout. And that also includes high fructose corn syrup. So if you're into drinking those sweet sugary drinks, try to stay away from those. And then yeast. And yeast is another compound in many of our foods that can contribute to too much uric acid in the body. And so bread, just bread made with yeast would be something to actually stay away from too. Really fun, huh? <laughs> Um, another thing is exercise can actually be helpful for people who suffer from grout on a chronic basis. Just getting out and moving, keeping the joints lubricated um, can be exceptionally helpful. Um, and then 
good foods for you. There's actually a few that many of us have heard may not be so great, but they're actually good for people uh, with chronic gout. And guess what? Coffee's one of them. Uh, cherries are another one of them. And we've also, most of us have heard of tart cherry juice, really helpful for people with gout. And then drinking lots and lots of water, just keeping yourself hydrated. Because one of the things that you want to do is keep flushing fluids through your system because that can also help break down those crystals. All right, so finally, there's herbs. <laughs> you knew I was going to get to the herbs, right? I love working with herbs and also the essential oils, but we're not going to talk about the essential oils today. They can be extremely helpful in issues like this. And if you want to use essential oils, try my carpal tunnel uh, serum roller bottle that I made here on YouTube. I'll put a link to it above. It's super helpful for topical pain relief and it might be helpful for people with gout too. But in terms of the herbs, there's a four categories of herbs I want to talk about that can be uh, helpful for you to put together in terms of if you are working with somebody that has this issue. So the first uh, category are the renal depurants. These are a form of a diuretic. There's a couple types of di diuretics. One one type of diuretic, which is the renal depurant, these actually break down solid waste in the body and help the body to excrete them through the kidneys. Another one is just a regular diuretic, and a diuretic flushes the body and flushes fluids through the body, but doesn't necessarily contribute too much to breaking down the solid waste. So in the case of uric acid, if you have too much of it in the body, you want it to break down. So guess what kind we're going to use? We're going to choose the renal deprint. And two of my favorites are dandelion leaf is one of them. Nettle leaf is another one of them. Where's my nettle leaf? Right here. Nettle leaf. And tail is another one. I don't have that out here right now. Gravel root is exceptionally helpful for this too. And celery seed. So celery seed can be a helpful additive. I don't have celery seed or I'd actually be adding it to this tea we're getting ready to make here. But I'm going to grab some <laughs> and then add this to, to, to the tea for my client. The second category of herbs are your anti-inflammatory herbs. So these are going to be herbs like the like turmeric, like ginger, wonderful, anti-inflammatory. Devil's claw is very anti-inflammatory. And then skull cap, but there's a couple different kinds of skull cap. You would want to get the skull cap by Colensis. That's the Chinese skull cap. It's very anti-inflammatory. If you get this wrong skull cap, which would be the skull or the scutellaria, uh, Latera flora, there's Scutellaria bicolensis, that's the one we want for gout, and then there's Scutellaria latera flora, these are Latin names, and that one is the relaxing kind, and it's not going to do anything for the gout. It might help the person just relax and feel better, <laughs> but not super helpful for the gout. An interesting thing about this anti-inflammatory section. So a lot of people will say, how about willow bark or meadow sweet or one of those herbs that contains high amounts of the salicylates, which is what aspirin's made of. And I'm gonna say no to those. And that's because there's evidence that the salicylates actually inhibit the breakdown of uric acid in the body. So you definitely, if you're dealing with somebody with gout, stay away from the typical pain relievers that contain the salicylates. You want to just go with the anti-inflammatories, like I just talked about, the turmeric and the ginger and those. One thing I want to say about turmeric is you want, if you're going to use it in a formula, be sure you've got some black pepper in there because the turmeric's not very bioavailable in the body. The curcumin is the compound. It's not super easy for the body to absorb, but if there's black pepper with it, which contains piperine, that enhances the absorption, so that's really helpful. Another category of herbs that are helpful are your liver supporting herbs. So we wanna be supporting both our liver and our kidneys. The liver is a detoxification organ, and anytime we've got buildup of anything in the body, helping the liver out is a good thing. In this case, burdock root, dandelion root are two of my favorites for supporting liver health. Milk thistle is another one. And just be aware, milk thistle, actually it's wonderful for the liver. You don't want to be using it in tea because the silymarin in the milk thistle is not soluble in tea. So this is where learning about the plants 
and learning how they act on the body is very important if you're going to be becoming an herbalist. <laughs> okay. And I would just want to say here, we're starting our next round of Ditch the Drugstore pretty soon in July. And July 15th, as a matter of fact, and as I am making this video, I believe this is, what is this, July 3rd or something? Anyway, I would love to invite you to join us for this next round. I get on my email list. You can do that by uh, getting one of my free guides and stay tuned for more information. It's a wonderful course. Okay, the next category of herbs are your antioxidants. Your antioxidant herbs uh, help reduce free radicals in the body and just, just generally very helpful to support the body. Tart cherry is one of these that's one of my favorites, especially for people with gout, because the tart cherry juice goes to work and helps with inflammation and also supports just overall health and reduces oxidation in the body. And then of course, ginger and turmeric again are two others. And anytime you can come up with herbs that, that kind of cross over into categories, they're wonderful to add to your teas. The next category of herbs that we're gonna discuss are your cardiovascular supporting herbs. Now you might think, wait a minute, why would we want cardiovascular supporting herbs when we're talking about the kidneys and, and how the kidneys flesh out this, these crystals and these substances? The reason behind that is that if your heart is having a hard time doing its job, then the kidneys are going to suffer, all right? And that's just layman's terms there. So if you've got high blood pressure, you want to definitely go to work to get that balanced as much as possible and support healthy kidney function. So some of my favorites are garlic, there's hawthorn berries are wonderful, olive leaf is helpful, hibiscus is really helpful as well. There's many others that are that can be supported. Motherwort is a good one. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into the herbal tea recipe that I formulated for this client. Now, I just want to mention, if I were, this is specific to this client, although it's pretty good, just all around formula. But when you're working with a person, you want to definitely try to create a formula that is for that person and everybody's different. This is why when you go to work and you are talking with somebody, you want to try to figure out, do your best to individualize it. We're gonna start off with nettle leaf and we're gonna go in three parts. And my part here is a one third cup measure. One, two, three, that's my nettle leaf. And then we're going to go with the dandelion leaf. All right, dandelion leaf. So here we've got two really nice kidney supporters. Next up, we're going to get some turmeric in there. And I'm going to use one part of turmeric. Ooh, yummy. Okay. <laughs> it sure is pretty. It's very golden. All right. And then we're going to put some ginger in. Do one part of ginger. I love ginger. Oh, one of my favorite herbs in the whole world. And then we're going to do black pepper. I actually like to use the peppercorns, but I don't have any. So I'm just going to use some coarse ground black pepper. And I'm going to use one part. Okay. I used up all my hawthorn berries that I harvested last year. Otherwise, I'd be putting hawthorn in. Since I don't have it, I'm going to substitute with some hibiscus. Two parts of hibiscus. And now, for flavor, we're going to go ahead and put in some cardamom. These flavorful, spicy herbs are really nice for stimulating the action. I'm just going to put in one half a part. It's pretty powerful. And then I'm going to put in some cinnamon chips. One final herb I'm going to add after this. I'm going to do one part of cinnamon. So good. All right. Motherwort. I love motherwort. Leonurus cardiaca stands for lion heart. <laughs> it's really wonderful for the heart. And I'm going to go ahead and add in, we've got one and a half scoops here. Okay. All right. 
And then we're going to go ahead and blend this up. Oh, it's going to be, an, I'll tell you what, when you make your herbal teas, there's something about having a really beautiful herbal blend. I'll show you this in just a second here. When it's pretty, people want to drink it. <laughs> so isn't that gorgeous? Just gorgeous. All right. So there we go. This is an herbal tea for gout. We learned a little bit about how it presents itself, why it presents, what to do about it, what medical doctors will do about it versus herbalists. And I just want to say, talk to your doctor if you're on drugs, if you're on prescriptions before you use herbs. That's really important because there are herb drug interactions with some things. I just want to share this with you too. This is the big book of herbal teas. It's 220 pages and it's a compilation of many of my herbal tea recipes from over the years. It comes with my Art of Herbal Tea course, which is new in the school. So go visit learn.healingharvesthomestead.com to take a look at our school courses. If you want to go to my website, www.healingharvesthomestead.com and I will see you inside.